Hi there. In this video, I am going to extend and implement the automated warehouse project using the visualization ability. During the video, I am going to mention how we can enter the PLC addresses into a project. Then I shall explain how we can use the visualization ability to design a human machine interface. Finally, I will use the visualization ability to extend the automated warehouse project which I explained it in the previous video. Alright, let's start the video with a simple program that uses an RS instruction to turn on or off an output. Until now, I explained how a variable like this can be connected to a push button or to other equipment inside factory I.O. via an OPC server. If you are using an ABB brand of PLC, you can add its addresses here. Note that real PLC addresses can be used directly without any variable, but I prefer to use variables to define addresses for them. Now let's compile the program. As you can see, there isn't any error, but CodeSys has not detected the entered PLC addresses because I am not connected to a PLC yet. Now let's see what is the visualization option. We can use it as a human machine interface or HMI. As you can see on the right side, there are different objects that can be used to design an HMI screen. First, let's add a simple lamp and a switch. Note that when an object is selected, you can see and change its properties on the right side. The most important item for a lamp is its variable. It determines the state of the inserted lamp. Let's connect it to the C variable. Now let's add a switch. Well, this switch can change the state of a Boolean variable. I want to use that to turn on this variable C, which is connected to the lamp. So I need an OR logic to turn on the lamp from two locations. Now I am defining a new variable to connect it to the inserted switch. Now let's test the design screen. Remember the both inserted lamp and the switch are connected to these two variables. Based on the program, I can use the switch to turn on the lamp. Also, I can use these two variables B and A to turn the lamp on or off. Well, this was a simple project to change or display the state of the Boolean variables. Now let's see how a number can be entered or displayed. Note that I can use the inserted potentiometer 
to change the stored numbers on the PLC memory. Let's define a new variable whose data type is integer and connected to the inserted potentiometer. Now the potentiometer is connected to this variable. By default, its range is from 0 to 100. On the right side, we can change the value under the scale option. Now to display the stored number in this variable, let's add an object whose name is meter. As you can see, the default scale for the inserted meter is between 0 to 100 as well. Let's continue to test the designed screen. Remember, both the inserted potentiometer and meter are connected to the same variable. All right. Let's implement a more complex project. Here you can see the automated warehouse project that we worked on it in the previous videos. Note that I extended the project further. If I change the state of the selector, the right sequence is going to be executed to unload boxes from the racks. Also, these variables which are connected to these buttons are defined to control the warehouse project. They function similar to the emergency. The start, the stop, and reset push buttons. Now let's start the automated warehouse to see the performance of the designed screen, which I shall explain its settings later. Note that these lamps are connected to the push button lights and this object displays the stored position on the controller memory. Similar to the previous video, if I press the emergency button the crane stops immediately. After that, I need to disable the emergency button and press the reset button. Now, the loading or unloading process can be initiated. Let's see the loading process. Now let's enable the unloading mode. In the next sequence, the crane picks up the last stored box and moves it onto the unload conveyor.
Like the previous video, if I press the stop button, the crane stops after finishing its current sequence. Now the crane is stopped. Let's press the start button. Alright, this is a simple HMI screen to monitor and control a process. Note that I can also control the automated warehouse using these push buttons. Now, let me explain how I extended the automated warehouse in this video. Note that I explained the basic concepts of the project during the previous videos. So, now I explain only the added programming parts. Well, I added the right sequence for unloading the boxes. It works like the left sequence. Their main difference is related to this interaction. For the loading sequence, the stored position is increased by one unit. But on the right side, for the unloading process, the stored position is decreased by one unit. Note that when the running mode variable is enabled, the state of the selector determines which sequence loading or unloading should be executed. Now let's go to the design screen. Well, as I mentioned earlier, these lamps are connected to the push button lights. Also, these four buttons are connected to the four new variables which have been used to control the automated warehouse. Note that under the input configuration settings, there are two items that can connect to a Boolean variable. The second one can be used as a push button and the performance of the first item is similar to the switches. Note that a button can be added from here. As I mentioned before, the connected variables to the four buttons have been used inside the control POU next to the push buttons. For example, this OR logic uses the start push button and the start icon on the design screen to enable the running mode variable. As you can see, I used 55 simple rectangle images from the basic category. As you can see, each object has some properties. For any inserted rectangle, I can define a text or a number. Also, each rectangle has a color variable which determines what color should be displayed? It has two modes, normal and alarm. I use the green color to indicate an occupied specific rack. Now I need 54 boolean variables to determine the state of all 54 racks. Instead of defining 54 variables, I define an array that includes 55 boolean elements 
and I use the 54 elements of the array respectively to determine the normal or alarm mood for the 54 rectangles. Naturally, I need a program to determine the state of these addresses. So I added this POU. As you can see, the position variable is an array that includes 55 Boolean memories. The first line of the program just converts the data type of the next position variable and it stores its result on this variable which is connected to the meter object inside the designed screen. The next lines determine the state of each rectangle. If the automated warehouse is in its loading mode, the boolean variables related to the current position is to be set to 1. Otherwise, if the unloading sequence is being executing, the corresponding variable is going to be changed to 0. Note that to detect whether the automated warehouse is in loading or unloading mode, these two implicit variables are used. I define them inside the SFC program, which refers to these two steps. Note that I explained the implicit variable during the previous videos. However, you can use the help window to learn them. Well, I use this implicit variable to indicate if the selected step is being executed or not. Alright, I explain the important points related to the extended warehouse project with the screen. Note that there are lots of settings related to the objects to help you to design more efficient screens for your projects. For example, you can change the visibility or position of an object based on a variable. In this video, I have tried to display the visualization ability in CodeSys using the automated warehouse project. I hope doing this project to help you use the visualization ability in your future projects. Thanks for watching this video. Thank <laughs> you.